Hey guys, it's Sage. We are back to working on the car, and if you don't know what happened last time, check out my last episode, episode five, so you're all up to speed and know what is happening. I do have some footage that I took the other day when I was filming that last episode, so before we do anything new, I am going to show you guys those clips. I'm gonna pull out the dipstick. It was in our way a bit last time, and I'm just gonna pull it out so we can get to everything a lot clearer. It's pretty stuck. So I'm gonna try my best and I'll show you guys when it's out. Here is the dipstick. I was able to get it out with my right hand. We decided since Dante helped us out so much last time and he knows lots about classic and old cars, that we're gonna drive on over to his house and see if we can get a good reaction out of him, showing him the sump and everything that's in it. Oh, there's a Just, hole in the pan. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's what they call yeah, can I put that? Soup. Yeah, lovely. There's, there's soup. Oh my god. Isn't gosh. that just fantastic? You, you, you. <laughs> so we have a connecting Look what you did. Yeah, big end. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. looking great. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It just let go. <laughs> now that you're all up to speed with where we're at, I'm going to tell you today's plan. First, we are going to take a good look at the underneath of the car so we can see if there's anything super alarming and crazy going on. Then I am going to clean out everything that was in the sump so we can get a better look and see exactly what's in there and hopefully get a better idea of what went on. Once we know what everything's looking like and what happened, we are going to take the cylinder head off. That's the plan for now, so let's get started. Before we move on, I need to take a quick moment of appreciation for this shirt. Just take a look. I hope you can see. It is super, super cool. And it is, in fact, from 1995. And my grandfather made it. He airbrushed it, and I think that's so cool. So, shout out to my grandpa. You make the best shirts. I love it. I have this little scope, and we are going to see if it can help us. So, we're going to put it into the third spark plug and that's where the problem was and we will see if we can figure out anything from that. All right, I'm gonna take out the third spark plug. Just gonna try and shimmy it out, twist it a little. There it is. And let's see what we can see. So I'll show you guys this. Pop this in here, it's a little light on the end. And let's see if I can in there if we can even see anything. Hmm. Looks like a lot of nothing. Let's spin it around. Oh, something, something maybe. Maybe it's a reflection. I'm not really sure what we can see there, but there's something. A little better view. I don't know if that tells us anything though. Okay, well that wasn't super helpful, but it was sure fun. <laughs> now we're going to get under the car and see what we can see. So now we're taking a look under the car and here you can see the oil pump and actually you can also see the failed connecting rod right here. It still moves, but if you take a look on the block there where all of the color came off, you can see where it was like hitting and basically what happened when everything went down. We just have to look for any other major damage or cracks. Here on the crankshaft, you can actually see a circle of scoring that you'll see in a minute. And it's shiny, the color is different, and there's a thick edge that stuff can get caught on. And so it is scored and damaged. This scoring is going to need to be ground down to smooth it out, and so nothing catches on it in the future. Now, this is something super interesting. If we go back to what we were just looking at, the scoring and also the failed connecting rod, that little circle of scoring actually relates to this flat section of the connecting rod that isn't supposed to be flat like that. This occurred because of the friction that happened when the crankshaft was coming around. They were basically rubbing against each other and that's what created the burrs and the scoring on both pieces. Now, if you look on this threaded end, you can see that there's still a bolt partially in it, and that's where it's sheared off, which we saw on the other part of the connecting rod that we found in the sump. 
and on the other threaded end, you can't really see in this video, but there's nothing in it and that's the bolt that came out clean and basically caused all of the problems just because it wasn't screwed on tight enough. And as was just shown, there's a bunch of burring on the edge of that as well. And it may be hard to tell, but this is supposed to be a semicircle and it has been stretched out wider than a semicircle, just like the other piece of the connecting rod was. Since I want this all nice and cleaned out and also we want to see what's inside, I'm going to take everything out and clean it off so we can see what it is. But first things first, rubber gloves. I'm just going to wipe it off with some paper towel for now. I have some lightly used paper towels in here. So first, as we saw before, I'm going to try and get as much oil off as I can. This is the part of the connecting rod. So I'm just going to try and clean that off to separate it. Um, but as we can see, I'll show you once it's a little more clean. This side is empty, but this one has a bolt that is like sheared off and basically broke right here. So that is no good. And also this is supposed to be a semicircle, but as you can see, it was stretched out and got pulled open a little bit. So that is not good. One done, we'll place it here. Next, we have this bolt. It's literally perfect condition. And we thought that there was a nut to go along with it, but after looking under the car, it looks like the other part is also that kind of spiraliness. So it just goes together and it doesn't need a nut. So it's very interesting because that one is in perfect condition. So what seems like happened is this is the one that failed and caused the big catastrophe and it was just loose. It just wasn't tight enough. I mean, basically it just unscrewed because it wasn't on tight enough and then it fell out and everything fell apart after that next we have the big end bearings these are just totally not right <laughs> also side note i'm realizing now probably worst choice of, of shirt and pants but you know what it's okay those are all the important bits i will show you but the rest in here is just like little bits that we don't need to look at or care about so let me show you what's in here right now this is what it's looking like right now there is obviously still stuff in there but it's not gonna be helpful to us and here is all the bits that I took and cleaned off. And now I'm just gonna wipe this out and give it a good clean. I'm just gonna kind of try and get all the gunk out and it is just super sludgy and thick. I hope you can see that in the corner there, but yeah, it's pretty, pretty gross. Next, I'm going to use this and I'm just going to try and scrape off what's remaining of the gasket. Also, if you guys have any recommendations for cleaning out all of the like excess and leftover oil, let me know. Since we didn't see anything super major when we looked under the car, we know that the engine is going to have to come out sooner or later. But before then, we are going to take off the cylinder head because that's something we can do when the engine is still in. And it's one more step and makes it a little lighter for when we do take it out. All right, so I have my Hanes manual here and this is what we're looking at doing right now. The cylinder head removal and refitting and this is my engine, I have the 1500. So basically first step, but then second step is disconnect the battery connections, which we did last video, so great. And then number three is drain the cooling system as described in chapter two. So we're gonna head over to chapter two, which is cooling and heating systems. And we're gonna find down here, here are the instructions to do that. And here's a little diagram to along with it. So the first step is with the car on level ground, drain the system as follows. Well, we have a problem with that. Certainly doesn't look like the car is on level ground and it would be pretty tricky to do that now since the flat tire and we've got everything up. So we are going to try and see if we can do it not on level ground, even though that's literally the first step. Um, so we're going to see if we can do that. And it says if the engine is cold, remove the filler cap from the radiator by turning the cap anti-clockwise, so counterclockwise, which we don't need to read if it's hot because we know that it is cold. First step was to remove the filler cap counterclockwise, so we are going to do that it says turn it this way to remove slowly and there it is we also have to remember that the thermostat is in here and this lead is disconnected so at some point later on in these episodes we need to reconnect this while i'm up here i actually just want to show you guys my belt here 
is frayed a little bit, which I believe I should in one of the other episodes, but that isn't good. Thankfully, it's not ripped all the way, but that may cause us some issues in the future, so we'll have to check that out. Now my dad is gonna get underneath the car and unscrew that so we can try and drain as much coolant as we can. And once we're done that, we're gonna move on to step three. We're just opening it up and putting it into a clean bucket for reuse, which I will show you that's what it says in the manual. Turn this and the radiator fluid is gonna come out, but it's hitting this and going everywhere. So we're gonna use a little funnel to catch it. So. Looks like it's working. Now we are draining the antifreeze and step three says if antifreeze is in the radiator drain, it into a clean bucket or bowl for reuse, which is what we're doing right now. Back to our original goal, which is removing the cylinder head. We ha are now draining the cooling system. So let's move on to the next step. Disconnect and remove the carburetor. So we're gonna work on that next. Here's the Stromberg carburetor. And this is the air filter cover. And I'm just going to go ahead and take that off. I'm just in the middle of taking the second one off. And there we go. So just to make sure that these are safe, I am going to put them back into where they came from so we don't lose them. In case you were wondering, we just popped this off, and this is what my air filter is looking like right now. All right, now that step four is done, we're gonna move on to step five, which is remove the temperature transmitter from the thermostat housing, which I actually think was the little wire that's already loose, so we may already be done that step. Since number five is in fact done for us, we're moving on to number six, removing the fan guard and slacken the alternator adjusting link bolt. I've got these two little guys popped on here and I'm just gonna squeeze them together if I can to slacken the alternator. Step six is now done, so we're moving on to seven. Remove the three bolts securing the thermostat housing slash water pump to the cylinder head. So where that little ratchet is, is one of the bolts, and then there's another one right there you can see, and then there's one down below that you can't quite see, but those are the three that we need to remove. I'm gonna go ahead and pop these off. I'm gonna push down. and seems pretty loose. I've got another tool and I'm just gonna continue to loosen this. Now that the three bolts from the thermostat are loosened and taken off, this I can just give a little tap to. And we can see that it's pretty loose and jiggling, but it won't come off because it's still connected here. So, and also you can see it's leaking a bunch of coolant, I assume, I don't know if you can see that, but it's all wet in there. And so now we're just gonna take this off, which I believe is actually the next step in the book, which I will show you. The next step is number eight, and it is in fact, disconnect and remove the coolant and air hoses impeding access to or connected to the cylinder head and the manifold, which is exactly that little bit that was stuck. I'm just going to go ahead and loosen this. Okay, it's pretty loose now. So we're going to take it off the rest of the way. Now that that is all loosened, I'm
there's one and that one is these are now off so i'm gonna go ahead and jiggle this one out as well oh and now it's spilling everywhere so lots is coming out of that thankfully we've got the bucket underneath so the rest of it can drain out Next is to disconnect the exhaust pipe from the exhaust manifold. One thing I want to mention that may affect this is we didn't end up taking the carburetor fully off. We just took off the air filter and we're going to see if we can get out what we need to get out that way. What we're going to do now is just disconnect anything like this that's connecting the exhaust manifold to the carburetor and see if we can loosen it. We're going to try and see if we can keep like these guys still connected and just move it to the side rather than fully taking it off, but we'll see what we can do. I'm gonna loosen this hose clamp now. This is a part of the carburetor and there's a spring and it's attached just to the bottom of this manifold. So we're unhooking it. And I wasn't able to get into these parts to unscrew myself because they're super rusty and stuck. So I'm getting my dad to just help loosen them. Also, this firewall accidentally got broken. So I'm gonna need a new one of those too. Now we're just going ahead and loosening these so we can take this all out so it's out of our way. Here is what the coolant is looking like, by the way. It's like a yellowy, orangey, sometimes red in some lighting. I don't know. I thought it was blue for some reason, but clearly it is not. Now we're going to loosen these bolts so that the carburetor and manifolds come off. We're just gonna undo that guy and this one right over here it is the next morning last night we had a little bit of difficulty so we called in a night but this morning we saw there were two hidden bolts so basically what you saw us trying to do is we were trying to separate the carburetor along with the intake manifold from the engine block all as one rather than just the carburetor but we had a lot of difficulty because it was super stuck and rusty and like i just said there was two bolts that we didn't see so we just took those off and it's looking pretty loose but there is one bolt that is pretty rusty and stripping so i'm going to show you exactly what the problem is this is what it's looking like right now the bolts aren't out yet they're just loose but we can tell that it is wiggly as you can see right there we just noticed there's actually a crack which is not and good. this is just the mounting um bracket for the carburetor to the exhaust manifold but we try to get this bolt or the nut off here and it's just rusted and stripped so it could be that you know by trying to do this we created this crack so looks like we might need a new exhaust manifold unfortunately it looks like that is where i'm gonna have to leave off this video we wanted to get the cylinder head off but it doesn't look like we're going to be able to manage to get that off today if you guys have any tips or have dealt with this like rusty sheared bit we put wd-40 on it and we've been trying to get it off but like you just saw it actually cracked if you guys know what to do, how to get this off, we are just going to have to leave it for now and try and figure out a way to get this off. That is going to be the end of today's episode. Unfortunately, we didn't get to where we wanted to, but wish us luck for figuring the rest out.